Higher Learning is a show about adults learning interesting facts while under the influence of marijuana. This show is filmed in Vermont where it is legal to smoke. The staff involved in the show want to be clear that we do not support its use by those too young or where it is illegal to partake in such behavior. While this show doesn't show the usage of drugs or use coarse language, it is not intended for children. Parental discretion is advised. Now, let's get to the burning and learning. Welcome to Higher Learning, a class in disjointed information education. or education. I know. I realized it when I said it. I do that a lot. What is high? Stop that. He's quoting a movie that we're not affiliated with. What is higher? Anyway, this week uh, on the show, I'm going to quiz Jason while he's sober on facts that I taught him last week about Mad Magazine. Hopefully the questions aren't as long as the They're facts not. were. Uh, it was a, our longest episode last week, I think, because it was like almost 20 minutes of facts. But, hey, the facts were longer. Um, so for people who don't know, he gets high on an edible. I teach him 25 facts. We come in a week later is usually the plan. It doesn't always work out that way, but this week, this week it is. It did work out. And I quiz him on those facts and see if he can puff, puff, pass or... Puff, puff, fail. And so far, he's only puff, puff, passed twice. Let's see how he does with these these questions about Mad Magazine. <clears throat> Mad was published by comic book company EC nice. under William Gaines. The EC stood for Entertaining Comics. But before he took over from his father, Max, what did it stand for? Educational comics? That is correct. Everyone now knows, or sorry, everyone that knows Mad Magazine knows <clears throat> Alfred E. Newman is the mascot. But who created him? I mean, there's not an answer. Nobody knows. Exactly. Some that, no, nobody some knows. Clipboard That's, or whatever. Right. Like, like they, they stole him. They stole him completely, and he had been used by dozens of companies and no one had a copyright on it. It was weird. In the first of many apologies, publisher William Gaines apologized early on for a fake biography of himself. Which of these things was not claimed about him in his autobiography? That his father was a communist, he engaged he was engaged to a farm animal, or he had bouts of pyromania. A farm animal? He that's correct. He did not claim to have been engaged to a farm animal. Good. good. Very good. Good, good. Uh, Alfred E. Newman was so recognizable, a letter was delivered from what country? Oh. Hold on. To Mad's New York offices without an address, just a drawing of Alfred on the envelope. We... New Zealand? Yes. Oh. All right. So four for four. Thank you, New Zealand, for being so guessable. Sure. In 1960, Mad appeared to predict the win of JFK over Richard Nixon. Their cover was printed weeks before the election. How'd they do it? It's a simple trick called you print both outcomes and flip the book to whichever way wins. Exactly. The back cover was for Richard Nixon. And, and they said, just put it facing the wins. way who wins. Exactly. Okay. Who was the character Moxie Kausnowski in Mad Magazine? Uh, like his his female companion? Alfred's? Yeah, girlfriend. Okay. But yeah. Don't be completely correct. She looked like a female version of him, and ah, people thought so that was siblings? a little weird. No. I mean, kind of like the Millhouses? I mean, yeah, where they weren't related but looked alike. After 44 years of not having any ads, why did Mad start using ads in 2001? Ah. There's he, three options. Oh. Slipping sales so they needed the money, to pay for a switch to full color, or they were bought by Time Warner and were told to. Uh, all right. It's one of those. That... Okay, the last one then? No, it was to pay for a full switch to color. See. It had always been black and white inside, so it's full color. Okay. That was what they used. The 
That's weird. No, wait, so hold on. No, you didn't get that one right. So let's see. Uh, Spy vs. Spy was created by a Cuban cartoonist named Antonio Projas. Projas? Projas? I don't know. Sure. Why did he leave his home of Cuba? Uh, you had a lot to say about this fact last week, so that's weird. You should remember it. Um, uh, the evil dictator that was in charge? No, he was suspected of being a spy for the CIA. Oh, right. The guy who created Spy vs. Spy was an accused spy. Um, so false. You got it wrong, I mean. Uh, with magazines like National Geographic and Playboy having fold-out centerfolds, Mads Al Jaffe created what in response? Yeah, I, I don't even know. Fold in back covers. You know that, that you fold them in. I didn't know that. I mean, I, I mean, maybe you taught me last week, but that doesn't mean anything. I, I don't know that. I literally showed him them. They're in the back of everyone, but okay. Mad had a movie called Mad Magazine Presents Up the Academy, directed by Robert Downey Sr. It was so bad, William Gaines did what? He asked for them to remove Mad TV Presents. Not from Mad it. TV. Or Mad, whatever, Mad Magazine. Yeah. <laughs> Wanted every reference to Mad removed from it. And then they parodied it. Called it Throw Up the Academy. Yeah. Um, but yes, so that one was actually a point. Uh, what incendiary image was on a mid-70s cover that required yet another apology from the publisher? What image did they put on the cover that people were like, we're not selling this. It'll offend our customers. In the 70s? In the mid seventies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a middle finger. It was okay. just a middle finger sticking. Up. And they, like a lot of places, refused to stock it. Sent them back. They years later, when they rebooted for a little bit, they did a reference to that by having him pick his nose like this. Right. Um, what is forty three man squamish? It's a sport made up Correct. by Mad Magazine. Bonus point. What's the difference when you play two-man Squamish? Uh, the point is to lose. Yes. You win by losing. Um, what celebrity was the first guest editor of Mad Magazine? Are there options? No. I have no idea. Weird Al Yankovic. Talked about. All right. Uh, what famous dancer once danced dressed as Alfred E. Newman for a TV special? There are options. I'm going to need them. Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly, or Sammy Davis Jr.? The first one. Fred Astaire, correct. Um, the first issue of Mad was actually called something oh sorry it retailed for 10 cents and was titled what it wasn't just called mad what was it called because they were known for you know their other stuff like tales from the crypt or whatever where it was like yeah i don't know it was tales calculated to drive you mad ah why did dc comics send a threatening letter to mad um, because they're punks. Sure, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. Oh well, because they had the audacity to parody Superman. Ah. In so you don't get that one. Let's see. In 1954, a book titled "Seduction of the Innocent," written by Dr. Frederick Wortham, brought about what comic book censorship group? That's the Comic Code. The Comic Code Authority. I'll take that. Oh, and by the way, you know who ran that? Marvel in DC. Yeah. 
interestingly, they got to break their own rules. Yeah, they were in charge. Like, no vampires, then they threw vampires in. It's like, well, how's that code approved? They're like, yeah, we're not going to ding us. In 1961, Mad made copyright history when music publishers representing songwriters Cole Porter, Richard Rogers, and Irving Berlin sued the magazine over a songbook of parodies that included words with the instruction that they could be sung to the tune of a specific song. What was the musician's claim in court? Why did they say that Mad couldn't do that? I, I don't know. They claimed only the original authors could legally parody their own songs. It was just as ridiculous last week when you were like, that's ridiculous. Um, the magazine's mascot went unnamed until a staff member noticed the name Alfred Newman where? Childhood Bully? No. Okay. Credits of a movie. It was Randy Newman's uncle, actually. Okay. Spelt different. They changed the uh, spelling and added the E so they wouldn't get sued. But singer Randy Newman, it was his uncle's Alfred. That's where they got the name. All right. Uh, let's see. Most attempts for Mad to be on television failed until which of these things? A, an animated special in 1974, Mad TV, or Mad on Cartoon Network? Which was the first one to do well on TV? I would assume Mad TV. Correct. Because the animated special never aired. It's wow. on YouTube, though. I mentioned that last week. Um, Mad inspired many imitators. Give so me many. that point. Oh, yes. Sorry. Definitely. Uh, so many imitators that founder slash publisher Bill Gaines had what in his office for each competitor? Say it again. Okay. Matt had many imitators. So many that the founder and publisher, Bill Gaines, had something in his office for each of the competitors to Matt. Yes. What was that thing that he had for each of them? Oh, I don't remember that part. I literally only remember the part after that part. The, I mean, the, the whole fact was about him having voodoo dolls. And he, voodoo dolls. Once they went out of business, he would... That's the part I remember. The part I remembered was that he got rid of whatever it was after. So you don't... So stupid. One. Yeah, it's so stupid that you didn't remember the point of the fact. Artist Sergio Argone has contributed more than 12,000 wordless gags running in the margins and other spaces in the magazine. His art has appeared in every issue since 1963, except for one in 1964. Why? Why wasn't it in that one? Why did he have no artwork in one issue in 1964? It got lost in the mail. Oh, okay. Got, he mailed in the artwork and it never showed up, so they left it blank. Um, so you don't get that one. Let's see. Alfred E. Newman has appeared outside of Mad Magazine since becoming their mascot. Which of these is not an appearance that actually exists? So two of these he appeared in, one he didn't. A Peanuts strip, The Simpsons, or Spider-Man comic? Spider-Man. Correct. He was in Superman. Superman, yeah. So you get that one. Let's see. Boom. Uh, what was The Mad Show in 1966? It was a musical. An off-Broadway play musical, yes. Get that one. And the last one. What was the first movie parody in an issue of Mad? Like, what movie did they make fun of? Oh. I don't know. It's too old. I can't think of a movie. King Kong. Ah, a bad and, movie. And for a bonus point, what did they call their parody? Ping Pong. Ah, okay. All right. So let's see. You got 15 right. So you got 60, which, as 
you may not know because some places 60 is passing. Some correct places. But that know how the to do high grades. school he went to, 70 My or above. My high school that didn't you know had what under they were 70, about. it was an F and you failed. So he F and failed. Yeah, well, my high school sucked. But next week, he's going to come in high, and I'm going to try to teach him. Hopefully, they'll sink in this time. Ah, so he's my bad facts. teacher, not my bad right. learning. 25 facts on another topic. I don't know what it is yet, but we'll see if he can puff, puff, pass. Or puff, puff, fail. 